Whoa! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome. We are continuing. Schema. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, I want to continue with that this as soon as possible. Especially after that uh, cliffhanger. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, we'll see how we go. Let's get into it. Continue. <clears throat> okay. It seems to be a flashback. <clears throat> so I like this song. But, um... How, how do we do the voice again? <clears throat> a hot summer day. The blue sky. Huge. Towering thunderheads on the horizon. The landscape shimmering in the heat. The overwhelming cries of cicadas. The cicada chorus. The, okay. Chirp, 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 it's as if the world has turned into a frying pan. What? 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 Oh, okay, remembering this now. Wee! 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 I see it's crying. <clears throat> Akiha is crying. In front of Akiha lies a slumped child. A deep red stain has blossomed on their white shirt. They don't move so much as an eyebrow. I am looking down upon them. My hands are stained the same red as the collapsed child. No, that's not right. My hands are stained red with the blood of the collapsed child. Which means... I've been a psychopathic murderer ever since I was a child. I think the last round, for anyone that didn't know, we found out that this was Shiki, I believe. And that's why he got the, uh, the scar as well. <clears throat> anyway, if, if I remember correctly, I, I hope I, I hope I do. <laughs> oh. The garden which the sun does not reach, where beautiful flowers Reach full bloom, rely, er, reliant on the on naught but moonlight. In the heavens hangs the white face which seals off the cosmos. In the midst of the streaking stars stands a solitary woman, pure as freshly fallen snow. She knows not words. She grasps not the concept of self. She is only ever used as a means for massacre. Drenched in blood, yet without wounds. It is only the lifeblood of, of her brethren that stains her dress scarlet, never her own. That is the only freedom allowed to her. When she completes her task, she returns to the castle like a falling star, to be imprisoned in its furthest depths. She sinks into a slumber so deep that even she cannot rouse herself from it. Yet, the woman in white is not even aware of her fate. She merely, merely, ga blah, blah. She merely gazes up at the moon, her eyes distant. Ooh. I thought I saw eternity there. Could it have been my imagination? I suspect it likely was concerns me not, reality or illusion, and makes no difference. Even if I were to die, the vision seared into my retinas would never fade. A flower of profound grace, the soul shimmering, celestial moat to light upon this earth. I thought to myself that I ought to pluck this star. Are we both to be imperishable? Death would never do us part. 
All I had to do was weave myself a destiny that would never end. Even if I killed her, or she killed me. A loop bound in blood. It would be fitting for me to sink into hell. After all, even though I had sought eternity, I had in fact trapped myself within a closed loop. Ooh. Hmm. I awaken from my long slumber. After satisfying myself that this is indeed my own room, I put on my glasses. Did someone leave the window open? I can hear the chirping of birds coming from the garden. The cool breeze brushes against my, my cheeks. Wait, 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 wait. I forgot something. I forgot to get the choices. <laughs> Give me a sec. Okay, okay. There we go. I now have the choices so I can see. <laughs> to make sure I don't mess up the ending. Okay. <clears throat> the faint light of the sun dances across my eyelids. It's the gentle arrival of morning. I get out of bed and check the time. Seven o'clock in the morning. Friday. My body isn't in the greatest shape. I'm probably still exhausted. My whole body feels lethargic and feverish. <sighs> Nausea assails me with each breath I take. This isn't my usual anemia, but rather the discomfort of an empty stomach. It's sickening. It feels like there's poison in the pit of my stomach. <laughs> he needs food! <laughs> The maid enters my room. She seems to be surprised that I'm awake. She probably thought that the occupant of this room was still asleep. Mm. Mm. For some reason, that trivial reaction rubs me the wrong way. What? Why, 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 why are you talking like that, Shigi? What the fuck? すぐに行くからおお。それでは食堂でお待ちしております。って何やってんだ、俺。え、why you feel terrible. I probably said all that stuff because I'm so on edge. I don't think I'll be able to focus on class like this. Oh, that doesn't mean I can just skip school today. Mm. Mm. My nausea is so bad I can't even think straight. Even so, I could swear there's something happening at school that requires my presence. I take a long, deep breath to try and distract myself from the discomfort I feel in my stomach. Not going away, huh? This is really quite inconvenient. I suppress my dizziness and leave the room. A drink. <clears throat> Shiki, what the fuck? <laughs> After finishing my tasteless meal, I pop into the living room. Tasteless meal? Huh? What's happened to him in a day? What the fuck? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> it is plainly evident that the person who is already there is in a terrible mood. Her prickly attitude makes it abundantly clear that she doesn't intend to be the first to break the silence. I have been trying not to think about it too much, but it's actually quite charming. In its own way. What would a rose be without its thorns? おはようございます、兄さん。兄さんも今朝はそれなりですね。昨夜は夜更かしをしていたようですが。ああ、そうだ。それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それ
ここのところ具合が悪くてちょっと公園で休んでいたんだそういう時は連絡をするようにと言ったはずですすぐに迎えを出しますから<笑> NO それで体の具合が悪いというのはどのくらいなんですか食欲がない程度だしばらくすればよくなるから心配しないでいい何ちゃんと栄養を取れば元に戻るさ大丈夫なんですか顔色が悪いようですし、うん、気分が優れないのでしたら今日はお休みになった方がいいよ明日から休みなんだし今日ぐらいは乗り切るさいいから自分のことに気を使いなさい俺なんかよりお前の方が毎日働いているんだから、うんうん、いいえ私は職務というか投手としての義務というか義務で家計が回せるなら破産する家はないだろう遠野の家を存続させることがどれほどの大仕事か部外者ながら分かってるつもりだよ休みの日なら俺も力になれるから、うんうん、何かあったら言ってくれに兄さん何かやる<笑>いえいいものでも食べたんですかあそれとも何かとんでもない悪さをしたので発覚する前に全行を積んで根回しをしているとかお,お前実の兄を何だと思ってるんだ昨日までは学校以外のことで忙しかっただけで今日からは心を入れ替えて遠野家の長男らしく勤めるさほらのんびりしてる暇はないだろ時間いい加減やばいんじゃないか I watch as though it's almost 7 20 a.m. My sister goes to school by car, but even so, she won't make it in time if she doesn't leave around 7. So, so this is. So, I'm going to go to the store. 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 I'm going to go Okay. My sister leaves the living room with a dignified air. Elegantly, without the slightest th sway of her long black hair. I am entranced by her stately bearing. What on earth is wrong with you, me? <laughs> What on earth is wrong with you, me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> You've had such a luxury sitting before you all this time and done nothing. Hold. Did you just call your? S hold. <laughs> hold. Hold up. Hold. Hold. Hold up. Did, did you just call your sister a luxury? Uh, Shiki, please. <laughs> I leave the mansion head for, head for school. I make my way down the hill. My limbs feel heavy, as though I'm piloting someone else's body. Hmm. I spot a familiar face inside the classroom. My friend may skip school a lot, but he arrives well ahead of time on the days he does show up. I'm sure that's partly because he lives near the school, but I think it's also down to the fact that he's the kind of up upright guy that follows through on his decisions. Wait. Wait, 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 wait a fucking minute. You, 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 you gone, wait, hmm? Didn't you, didn't, didn't, didn't you die? Eh? Oh? 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 大事には至らなかったんだけどお父さんが心配性でね例の通り魔事件の犯人が捕まるまで休んでいなさいってあオッケーそれは何よりでも捕まってないよな犯人ああまここ数日ニュースもねえし逃げたか隠れたかしてるんじゃねえのうん<笑>いつまでも休めないし事件も途絶えたでしょ
それでお父さんもしぶしぶな顔で学校に行きなさいって That's good to hear. I won't press her on the details of her injury. I can more or less guess what, it, what happened after hearing how worried her father was. There's a chance that Yumizuka had a run in with death somewhere out there. Just like Tonoshiki did. What? Why are you speaking in the third person? Huh? What? <clears throat> It's a very odd chapter so far. This is very unlike Shiki. Hmm. To, I could not eat any of the Hajimari. Janatona, Mata Hirius Mini. My friend goes back to his seat as soon as the bell signaling the start of homeroom rings. Oh, blush you. However, my classmates still shyly staring at my face. No, Stano, Yumiska. Square Modoranino. Sorry, Tomo. <笑>俺の机で一緒に授業とか受ける嬉しいけど遠慮します今日今日はおかしなこと言うのうん私が休んでいる時に何かあった別に何も弓塚さんの方こそ変じゃないわ私はいいんだよ闇上がりですからうん
soon dies down again. Thankfully, there wasn't anyone around. If someone, just about anybody, would have sufficed and been near me, I would have been satiated, but thankfully that wasn't the case. Huh? Yet? Yet? Hmm? Hmm? I sigh, letting out a lungful of air. I leave the blood-red schoolyard in ha hand clutched over my parched throat. <laughs> I drag my limp body back home. The sluggish feeling in my limbs that I woke up with haven't improved at all. I require a more decisive solution. I need to come up with something fast. I need it tonight. Or else. Tadaima. <laughs> So he's working on something in the lobby. She's carrying an unfamiliar chair. I wonder if she's redecorating or something. Oh, that's a cute pose. We haven't seen that one. The maid must have noticed me as she's now walking over with a quiet, shuffling footsteps. The way she approaches me without so much of a hint of suspicion calls to mind a sweet little bird. She's so vulnerable that I can't help but sigh. Luckily for her, I'm a man of restraint. If I were a heartless hunter, I'd have shot her down by now. How much more unsightly can she get? Stop flaunting that pallid neck of yours so brazenly. Oh! Uh-oh! Uh-oh! <laughs> I'm not liking this, so uh, I, I think... The reincarnation might be happening soon. It's not good. Hmm. それならいいんだ。自分でできるから。喉が渇いてるんで、食堂にあるお茶意識使わせてもらっていいかな。はい。トレイにっているものなら問題ないと思います。そっか。仕事中呼び止めて悪かったね。I say goodbye to her and head for the dining room. Oh. Having quenched my thirst, I return to the lobby. There was a selection of green tea and some light snacks on the tray, and so I ended up taking a longer tea break than I planned on. Now then, it seems that the other residents aren't home yet, so I'll wait in my room until dinner time. I look down at my smarting knee and find the chair that the maid had been carrying earlier. If it placed it along the wall to prevent it from getting in anyone's way. If I'd been paying attention, I wouldn't have bumped into it. My I breathe out a sigh. There's no point in putting another chair in the lobby. We have more than enough chairs in the lobby. What's the point of having so many? How does she not understand that this superfluous excuse is an eyesore? Good lord. What lack of taste, of modesty, of purpose. Shit. The eye banged on the chair still hurts. This pain is superfluous, too. I would not have to feel this way were it not for that chair. This is just my luck. I finally have some time for myself, only for it to be ruined by some maid's blunder. I kick the chair. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Kicking the chair causes my leg to be assailed by even more superfluous pain. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's a nuisance. It's getting on my nerves. This chair is an eyesore. This chair. 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 Oh. 
落ちたんだ。わわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわしかし、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここ Another headache as I shake my head to try and drive it off. I notice something at my feet. There, now completely unrecognizable, are the strewn about remains of what used to be a chair. Huh? My heart is pounding wildly. This is the one. Yes. It comes as such a shock that I thought my heart would stop. My body temperature plummets. I can hear the contents of my heart creaking and groaning as they freeze. I look down at my hands, dumbstruck. Sure enough, there are marks from where I'd gripped the legs of the chair. I don't understand. This behavior doesn't make sense. Oh, s h i k i wouldn't do this. Sure, I put my foot on the chair and yeah, it kind of hurt, but. Did I fly into such a childish rage? Destroy it over something so trifling? Shiki sama. Go kibun ga sugure nai na desu ka? Tai chou ga wari no desu tara. Oi sha sama o yobi ita s h i m a s ga. I know that look. I saw those eyes many times. Like when I was in the hospital. Eyes that stare at me. That stare at Tonoshiki like he doesn't belong. I pull away from the sweet little bird. Away from the broken chair that I, sm that I smashed to pieces with these very hands. シキ様、落ち着いてください。そんなに息を乱しては、お体に触ります。いいんだ、ほっといてくれ一人になりたいんだ、一人にさせてくれ !I run up the stairs, yelling.I muse that it's almost like I'm running away.But for some reason, it feels like it's all happening to someone else. As soon as I get back to my room, I stumble right into bed. I pull the blanket over me, cutting myself from the outside world. It's back. A dull ache in my temple's back. My head just won't stop throbbing. The headaches keep on coming like a brand new heart is manifested inside my head. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. Because of this pain, but I've been feeling so irrationally hostile. Did I finally go crazy from looking at the lines day after day? No. I just need to calm down. That's only a headache. It won't get any worse as long as I keep my glasses on. That's all there is to it. Stay calm. It'll pass if I stay calm. She went away. The room is beautifully quiet. The only thing in here making any sound is the clock. I'm sure I'll be feeling calm in no time.
hands of the clock. Hey. Could you pipe down for a bit? So calm. Wonderful. I shouldn't have to worry about anyone bothering me now. If my headache refuses to go away, I might as well sleep. Now once I close my eyes, the dark of the night will come to me. Once night falls, I can forget everything. There's nothing wrong with that. Surely, everything's over now. Anyway. Oh, so so No more vampires. No one left to fear. No more nightmares coming to torment me. And no more pesky executor. Then, all is well. I let out a heavy sigh and sink into a deep slumber. Perhaps it was just my imagination. I awake with the sense that I'd just heard someone scream. The clock informs me it's after midnight. Since I went to sleep early and missed out for, on dinner, my body's now desperately pleading for food. I can't make my own food, so I guess there's only one option. I'll have to get some outside. By the way, eating is such an oversimplification. There are actually two types. Eating for pleasure, it takes painstaking amount of time and effort. And eating to live, which is far easier to accomplish. Tonight, I'm going for the latter. My limbs are still sluggish. I don't have much energy to spare, but to think. that I'd ultimately find myself spectating another feast instead. Hole? Hole? What the fuck is happening? Hole? I spectate the writhing bodies from atop the building. Hmm. Right now it's only six. But if this keeps turning people into the dead, into the dead left and right, the victims will start piling up exponentially. It really does have the characteristics of a game. She tortures her prey for fun, using the heady scent of their suffering to satisfy her own sadistic desires. Disgraceful, just as one would expect from some amateurish oaf. And they tell themselves that's that's oop, that one's enough. Before long, they get so swept away that they're blindly devouring anyone they can get their hands on. Impulsively, I look down at my own hands. When we eat, is that an act of good or of evil? I do not mean the act of eating simply to survive, but of eating for pleasure. Can the endless pursuit of ever more delicious experiences really be condoned? Why, of course it can. It is not those who kill who are culpable, but those who are killed. If a creature cannot defend itself and falls prey to the strong, then that is simply nature running its course. To kill other living beings, to feed upon other species of animal. If that is what it means to be strong, and dead apostles are not the strongest. Indeed, humans are the ultimate predators. 
an intelligent species capable of making it uh, of making up for their weakness through civilization to put it in the words of the true ancestors humans will surely be the ones to finally kill the largest life form there is in the world of course ultimate does not mean strongest it simply means they've taken predation to its ultimate form Though humans are an outstanding species, as individuals they remain pitifully weak. Anything so weak that it must sacrifice everything other than itself to survive is, in no uncertain terms, fundamentally evil. The creatures humans prey on may be different, both in terms of their ecology and their level of intelligence, but that doesn't change the fact that you prey on them. With that in mind, do you not think it's arrogant to deem homicide evil? If anyone is guilty of sin, is it not those who, despite being predators, live in ignorance of this truth and are no longer even capable of protecting themselves? That's wrong. It's the kind of one-sided argument that only the strong could make. You vampires can keep your perverse logic to yourselves. Oh, perverse. Oops. Watching this scene unfold fills my heart with excitement. But I'll take my leave for tonight. Having my table manners and choice of menu critiqued by my very own self would only spoil the mood. The residual scent is more than enough to fill my stomach. I have to get back to my room before I awaken. Oh. Oh. On my way home, I look to the sky. And it hangs a moon. It looks like it could fall at any moment. The hunger I thought suppressed wells up in my throat. And I begin to desire a finer nectar. Yo. Oh. If I had to name something, I'd like a woman. Someone of utmost quality awaits me at the mansion, though I am hesitant to lay my hands on her. It isn't that I have some emotional hang-up around preying on family. I simply do not want to die, and so my instincts are telling me to avoid danger. I'll have to leave her for last. Or perhaps... I have no choice but to ambush her and take her out right now. While everyone is yet to notice my... transformation. Oh, oh. Mm. Hypothetically speaking, the way of being A who can steal life force from others. Let's presume we th we then also have being B, was had their life force stolen by being A. It's different under the hood, but on the surface it resembles the relationship between humans and vampires. For A, life force is basically their financial assets. As long as B is alive, he can utilize the assets that B produces like it's their own bank account. Only A profits from this, but as a result, A and B's relationship has become coexistent. これは今までの手名にはできなかったことだ。ま、偶然のなせる奇跡ってやつだな。うん。たまたま転生した先の崖に吸血鬼みたいのがあり、その犠牲者がしつこく生き残りやがった。悲惨な話だがね。この町には一
His father put him down like the monster he was. However, he still had a second bank account full of life force to draw on. Konoshiki being B. As a result, A survived while B died. His account drained dry. What complicated matters is that B, who should have died, was instead brought back to life by way of an unusual intervention. だが、その陰で首が繋がった。大公社は本国に帰還させた。真相も俺が抑える。てめえは安心して目を覚ませ。その後ゆっくり不老の秘術について取引しようじゃねえか。Hey oh. Mario, what are you doing? That sounds Bean B was taken to a hospital where their life was saved through surgery. No. Perhaps it's more appropriate to label it the forced survival of a near dead individual. Accidentally blood eh? Occidental? Occident Occ Occ Wow, I've never seen that. Occidental? Accidental? Occident Occidental What the fuck is Occidental? I I'm I'm <laughs> Oxy Occidental. What is the word Occidental? The western part of the world, okay. I see. <clears throat> occidental bloodsuckers can prolong someone's life by giving them their own, their own blood, thus turning them into their prodigy or progeny. But Oriental vampires are different. They possess some unknown technique that lets them revive a human being at death's door without infusing them with blood. Most intriguing. This country is small and isolated, but perhaps that is precisely why it has managed to, s to so fiercely retain these arcana of old. Hmm. This ancient clan is one such entity. Even if some foreign vampire hadn't shown up, their demise was inevitable. Oh, how nostalgic. I finally returned to this house. The first time in eight years. Uh oh. Uh oh. Huh? Vermilion vestiges. Two. Home? Wait, this is our living room. <gasps> oh. I forcefully snapped bolt upright in bed. I must have been having a terrible dream. My body soaked with sweat. Except I don't remember having the kind of dream that would make me toss and turn in my sleep. In fact, I get the sense that I slept deeper and longer than usual. It feels as if I've slept for an entire day. Thanks to that, I wasn't greeted by an unpleasant sight when I woke up, and I got a good night's sleep. I must have been really out of it last night if I didn't even remember to take my glasses off. No, I should stop thinking about what happened in the lobby. As long as I tell Akiha about how I broke the chair, so he probably won't have to take the blame for it. After a few timid knocks, a familiar figure enters the room. Mm. So he bows deeply, and after everything that happened yesterday, there is no bitterness in the her expression. I'm sure this behavior is just par for the course for a maid, but right now I'm ex especially grateful for it. Oh, mm. Hmm. Akiha-sama-e-no-kou-kou-kou-wa-nakutou-mo-yoroshii-ka-to-zonjimasu. 
Song. I feel a little guilty about just sweeping what I did under the rug, but I guess that's better than Akiha getting the wrong idea and scolding Hisui for it. ありがとう、ひつえ。小白さんにもお礼を言っておいてくれ。はい。しきさまにそう言っていただけるのなら、姉さんも喜ぶと思います。それより、しきさま。あの。え、what Oh. <laughs> I I slept for three days. I can't see why she'd ask me something that obvious. <laughs>失礼いたしました。私の思い違いだったようです。それでは制服に着替え次第、食堂の方へおいでください。So he leaves the uniform she's holding on top of my desk and quietly takes her leave. Oh, I pull myself together and get out of bed. As I'm taking off my pajamas and changing into my uniform, I notice my knife sitting on top of the table. For the past few days, I've gone around with this memento from my father stashed in my pocket. I'll likely never see you again. Senpai, not cute. Everything that tied me to vampires, starting with Vlof, has been swept up together and carried off to who knows where. School without Senpai won't be nearly as exciting. Still, it's only a return to the way things used to be. All I've lost are things that I only recently gained. Everything I had before still remains, just as it was. In a sense, this return to my ordinary life is the one thing Senpai left behind. Yes. If I frame it that way, I can keep on living even without Senpai around. I won't be able to forget about her, but I'll keep on living. Even if it's nothing more than an empty lie. If I keep repeating it day after day, it'll become, a, become my reality. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I put away the knife in my desk drawer and leave my room. Now then, it's time to head to school, just as I always have. 7.45 AM. At school drawing near, the road is teeming with students. I can spot a couple of people that seem to be struggling with the return of the work week, but the overall mood is still cheerful. The bizarre events that plagued the city seem to have stopped leaving everyone feeling like a weight has been lifted from their shoulders. And yet, I can't adjust to this carefree atmosphere. Not only do I know the truth behind the, those incidents, but the familiar sight of the school reminds me of a reality I'd rather forget. I know it's pathetic, but no matter how much I try to cheer myself up, the fact that Senpai is gone still weighs heavy on my head. Eh? 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 Hold on a second. That illusion doesn't look like it's actually an illusion at all. It looks more like the figure of someone I'd never mistake for anyone else. This makes no sense. Why the hell is Senpai nonchalantly strolling to school like she doesn't have a care in the world? Without even meaning to, I call out as I run after her. Senpai calmly turns around as if she... As if she'd known I was there all along. Oh yeah, トノ君。おはようございます。今朝はいつみなく元気いっぱいですね。はい、おはようございます。で、そうじゃなくて。3度目。こういうの3度目です。先輩、帰ったんじゃないんですか。その予定でしたけど、当面仕事がないようなので、
私がトーノくんを置いて帰るわけないじゃないですか Senpai said those words with a faint smile on her face. Senpai giggles as she answers me, an embarrassed smile on her face. My chest is so tightly packed with emotions that I can barely breathe. I don't think I've ever been this happy. Or rather, this grateful to be alive. But I feel like if I let my guard down now for so much as a second, I'd be liable to hug Senpai on the spot. Make no mistake, my heart is on fire right now. I can't even imagine what I'd do right now if the two of us were alone. Senpai! I firmly grasp Senpai's hand. あのですねずっと学校にいたらおばあさんになっちゃいます<笑>私は3年生なんですからあと4ヶ月で卒業ですそ,そうでしたすみませんでも昨日みたいにいきなり帰るなんてことはなくてちゃんと話はできるんですよねもちろんですとも、うん、初始貫徹はいい言葉ですこうなったら最後までお付き合いしますよトーノくん As I nod, I realize just how deeply relieved I am. My body wants to go run laps around the school grounds, but my heart is filled with an even deeper feeling. I'm so happy that I want to cry, but I don't want to let even one drop of this happiness leak out that way. It is, it is. So she was fully aware of just how much of a surprise this would come as. I find myself cracking a wry smile at her mischievous nature. <laughs> I give her an honest smile to try and convey exactly how I feel right now. So, 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 日頃の行いがたたってしまったと反省すべきところでしょうか I'm seemingly embarrassed, Senpai averts her gaze. とそろそろ朝礼の時間ですね。トノくん、そろそろ行かないと遅刻しちゃいます。そうだね。それじゃあ先輩、また休み時間に。うん。I wave goodbye to Senpai and turn to face the school. A grin still plastered across my face. I begin running towards my classroom as fast as I can. Bing bong. First period's over. We've got a ten minute break before the next class starts. There's no way I can hold out until lunch. I know I'm being way too over eager, but I can't help myself. Just catching a glimpse of her will be enough. I'll head to the third year classrooms and find Senpai. My mind goes blank at this unexpected encounter. Senpai managed to beat me to the stairs somehow. Senpai,我探しに行こうと飛び出したというか、いつも待ってるばかりだから、たまには、こっちから行こうと思ったんです。それはそれは嬉しいですけど、トーノくん、私のクラスを知らないでしょ。3年の B クラスですから、うん、覚えておいてくださいね。Got it. な、なんでしょう、その沈黙。何か不名誉な指摘を受けている気がしますが。いや、茶道部の部費でお茶飲んでるだけじゃなくてよくてなと<笑>うん、うん。うん、関心、関心。分かってましたけど、真面目に授業を受けてたんですね。うん、うん。Shouldn't have said that. The fact that I can't bring myself to pretend I didn't mean it is a little heartless, even for me. 
あまりに先輩が寝室鬼没なんでよからぬ想像する時もなくはありませんでした先輩の耳には届いてないだろうけど12年の間じゃ楽しい噂話もあるしほうほうよからぬ想像とはどのような授業にいないのにいるように見えたりとか実は何人にも分身できたりとかいくらなんでも万能すぎるし実は学校を裏で牛耳ってるじゃない<笑>とかノーモンフェンスいやいやコースコーストーナくんはそう思っていたんですか<笑> ?No! Is this what it all feels like? In the blink of an eye, the pleasant atmosphere has been replaced by an icy chill. This is really bad. I say the wrong thing here, it'll, it could easily spell my doom. One thing's for sure. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, you do skip classes, right? Mm. Rather, I know for a fact that that one's true. Senpai hangs her head in shame. Well, it's not like she doesn't have any good excuse. Her primary res responsibility is slaying vampires, so you can hardly blame her for missing class once in a while. Ah, but, Senpai. サドーブについては疑問があるというか質問があるというか前に部員はいないって言ってましたけど、うん、この学校初めからサドーブそのものがないんじゃないですかあのもしかして本当になかったじゃあ作動室は先輩が作ったいや学校側に作らせた謎の空き教室なんですかそう私にはてんでわからないお話みたいです。<笑> I don't know. Seal Senpai's gaze wanders over to the windows as she blatantly avoids answering the question. いいけど、別に。どんな悪さをしても、先輩は根っからの悪人じゃないし、誰にも迷惑はかけてないんだろうし。でも、先輩の暗示ってそんなことまでできちゃうんですかですから。トーノくんのお話は点でわからないのでお答えできません。<笑>うん、オッケーオッケー。I stare at Seal Senpai intently. A little under a minute passes in complete silence. 割としつこいんですね。別<笑>に<笑>先輩の目って青いんだなって見てただけですよ。Riz, nice. Senpai breathes a sigh as if admitting defeat. きますが、暗示というものはそんなに都合のいいものじゃないんですよ。人を言いなりになんかできませんし、うんうん、無理難題を通すこともできません。暗示とは物事の捉え方を変えるのではなく、そらすというのが大前提なんです。私がいくら、とうのくんはカレーが大好きと言い聞かせても、とうのくん本人がカレーが大嫌いなら、うん、その暗示は成立しません。あれ、そうなんですか。じゃあ本人が嫌がっていることは無効化されるはいまあそれでもトウノくんにカレーを食べてもらう方法はいくらでもありますけどね例えば大好きだから食べるというのではなく食べなければ死んでしまうと暗示をかければ、oh. ああなるほど大嫌いでも食べるしかないですね、うん、なんだやっぱり何でもできるじゃないですかそれだから何でもじゃありませんってばそういった意味のすげ替えはとても難しいんですきちんと舞台を整えてよっぽどうまいストーリーを作らないとかかってくれませんうん暗示にかかりにくい人も大勢いますし私にできることなんて私を疑問に思わないという暗示ぐらいです Right I'm pretty sure n o e l Sensei mentioned that too Said something about CL s e n p a i creating an environment where none of the students would question the presence of an unfamiliar upperclassman. But that's all CL s e n p a i s suggestion did. <coughs> Sorry, I need a drink. <clears throat> <sighs> mm. 
which means that the reason why everyone in school came to depend on her has nothing to do with her suggestions. They simply started to rely on her as a natural consequence of her tendency to help people out whenever they're in need. Hmm. I look unwell. I'm feeling pretty good, so I don't see why she'd think that. そっちは相変わらずかな。でも今朝は調子がいいです。そもそも少しぐらい痛くても眼鏡をかけていれば問題はありません。そうですか。それは聞いて安心しました。でも油断は禁物ですよ。事件は解決しましたが、何があるかわ
Ariko answers immediately, like I asked the most obvious question in the world. I see. See, all of I started coming to school again, so everything's gone back to normal. Oh, that sure seems like a much bigger change than she claimed suggestion was capable of. Ah, senpai da! Yahoo! Ariko waves at her excitedly. Shiyan-senpai politely bows to us. Tono Someone has gripped me tightly by the shoulders and he's vigorously shaking me back and forth. <laughs> the perpetrator is none other than Ariko. Ariko looks back and forth between Ciel Senpai and me and an exasperated look on his face. Hmm? Ciel Senpai and I exchange glances. <laughs> the sweep of his hands, Ariko exaggeratedly points outside the window. Mm. I give what I assume to be a reasonable answer to Seal Senpai's question. But then. Mariko starts scolding me once again. Dumbass, Ariko. You think I wouldn't love to go do something like that? The problem is... I still a glance at Seattle Senpai. I feel like she'd be way more at, ho at home ta taking a literally stroll around the park than having an afternoon out on the town. There's no way I could propose something like that to her. Even if I did invite her, I'm sure she'd refuse. Oh. Mm. ちょ、先輩。いいじゃないですか。たまにはこういうのも。うん。もう何も気兼ねをする必要もないんですし、トーノ君とイヌイ君と3人で遊びに行くんならきっと楽しいです。まあ。うん。先輩がいいって言うな
人よりいっぱい食べるもんな先輩そりゃお金がかかるかち違いますなんてことを言うんですか遠野くんは This hypothesis is well supported by all the data I've gathered in the tea ceremony room, but I'll just drop it for now. いいです私も乾くんに賛成です今から3人でお昼ご飯を食べに行きましょう映画館の横にある喫茶店のインド風パイが美味しいと聞いて、うんうんうん、いつか行こうと決めていたんですもうアーメンエルブとはツーだね先輩あの喫茶店のマスターどこぞのイタリア料理の達人らしいぜ I must wonder how the hell this guy is so well informed about this kind of gossip. So, I'm going to go to the next one. 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 I grab my bag and also make a dash for my house. Plant uh, panting, I jog up the hill by the mansion. I made it here from the school in 15 minutes. An astounding new record. But still not enough, I want to get there on time. That's another 5 minutes gone. It took me 20 minutes just to get home. Even if I pull out all stops, I don't see any world in which I can get ready, run back down the hill, and make it to the station in less than another 20 minutes. Senpai must have decided on that ridiculous schedule knowing full well that my house was on top of a hill. I rush into the lobby and finally come to a halt. Panning heavily, I calm my racing heart. I'd better slow to a, br a brisk walk from here, both because running inside the mansion would be a breach of etiquette, and to give myself a chance to catch my breath. Shiki-sama, you've been in the house for a long time? Tadaima, I'm back home. I'm going to go to bed soon, so I'm going to go to bed. I greet Isui, who has just come out of the living room, and begin making my way up the stairs. Uh oh Suddenly, we found a new warning. Uh oh My vision is dyed a deep red. Oh. Shiki-sama! I hear Hisui's voice, her feet pounding against the carpet. I didn't know she could get this worked up. Shiki-sama! Oけがありませんか? My ears pick up that voice right next to me, but I can't see Hisui at all. Nothing exists but the crushing pain inside my skull. おちついてひついちゃん。階段から落ちた怪我は軽いだ木だけよ。お医者様を呼ぶほどのものじゃないわ。それより危ないのは体の熱です。階段を踏み外したのも熱のせいでしょうから。No. No. We need to go to the restaurant. Hmm. The sound of Isui's footsteps fade into the distance. Shiki-san, you got tired? Shiki-san. Yes. Shiki-san, I was coming up from the mountain. うん。背中を軽く打ってしまわれましたが、幸い大事はありません。ですが、熱が終わりのようですね。お出かけの予定かと存じますが、どうか今日はこのままお休みください。ガクさん、places a hand on my shoulder. 
Steadying me as I pick myself up. いや、大丈夫。休まなくてもすぐ収まりません。ここまで全力で走ったから息が上がってるだけで。行けません。そんな青い顔をして何をおっしゃっているんですか。四季さんのお体を見るものとしてこれ以上の無茶はさせられません。
I can't find her. Not with things this disorganized. There's nothing. They seemingly meaningless. This is just... Oh no. Okay. I, I keep thinking like the worst is gonna happen. I hear the voice that I long to hear. But I'm too exhausted. Oh exhausted to even look at her. Okay, let me check, make sure alarms are off, because I had alarms on when I took a, a little nap yesterday. <laughs> It's fine. There we go. It's just baiting us? Maybe. I know this isn't the right choice, because I've got the things here. So we're going to have to go back. But I do want to see what happens. <laughs> she doesn't have to apologize. I think the fact that she can be a little overzealous in the heat of the moment is actually one of the things I love about her. that I came. It seems like Senpai was looking forward to this too. I've got to power through this vertigo so that the three of us can have fun together and enjoy this ordinary day to the fullest. Uh oh. Oh. The next thing I know I'm lying in bed. Oh. <laughs> I crane my neck to get a look at my surroundings. My arms and legs feel like blocks of lead, probably because of my anemia. I'm back at the Tono Mansion and I can see the sun setting through the window. Isui's here as well. She must have been watching over me as I slept. Shiki-sama, you've been in the mood? Isui... I'm... How do I... Shiki-sama,外出先で倒れになられました。ご同伴されていた語学友様から連絡があり。Shiki-sama,外出先で倒れになられました。So nothing really happened. That's really that different. I was expecting like something bad, or like a bad ending or something, but I guess nothing happened. So,結局俺は。I pushed Gohaku-san out of the way, then went and passed out. <laughs> okay, okay. So nothing's really gonna happen. So let's just go back to what should have happened. <laughs> okay. I hear my skull crack. I think. Haku-san is right. She's right. I'd only cause problems for CL Senpai and Arihiko if I went to see them with a headache like this. It's not like I'll ever I'll never get another chance to see them again. I should just take things easy for now. So mm. Yeah, I think we definitely got like baited with that other choice. I thought Shiki was gonna like finally snap. <laughs> mm-hmm. In fact, I can barely even stand. あ、ちょうどよかった、ひすいちゃん。しきさんをお部屋まで連れして。ねえさん。ですが、ひすいちゃん、しきさんは病人なんですよ。困っている人を見捨てるのはあなたの性格じゃないでしょ。ええ、今
四季さんの熱は疲れから来ているようですから、うんうん、薬は私が処方しますひすいちゃんすぐに行くからあとはよろしくねカクさんブリスクリーハンズオフトワーズ・ザ・ウェスト・ウィング・ウェイ・ハルームズ・ロケーテッドそれでは四季様お部屋にお連れします So he proceeds to apologize in advance and timidly lends me her shoulder. With her help, I begin climbing the stairs. As we make our way upstairs, it isn't the constant pounding of my headache that leaves an impression on me, it's the pained expression on Hisui's face. She stands right beside me. Ultimately, I gave Kwaku san a message for Ciel Senpai. Told her she's waiting in front of a movie theater and then headed for my bed. My headache won't let up. My body temperature, on the other hand, has sunk so low I've lost all sensation in my limbs. It's gone right back to normal again. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, she. <laughs> all that's left to do now is get into bed, lie perfectly still, and wait for my headache to pass. 姉さんはマキッサ様のご合意で薬剤師としての教育を受けさせていただいたんですマキッサ様が亡くなられる前は、うん、マキッサ様の健康面での相談役でもありましたイソイズ regained her usual impassive appearance and is now telling me something I never even asked her about Oh I feel a grinding pain in my temple Why is this worse? <laughs> What? This is more, a bit worse than the other one. Well, it, this is the right thing, it says. It's like someone's jabbed a knife about a centimeter deep into my head, and he's now working it around in a circle like you would an old fashioned can opener. Despite the amount of pain I'm in, it seems like he's always taking it in stride and intends to continue ta taking care of me. This stab feels deeper than the others. It's like whatever's been carving through my flesh has finally struck bone. Shiki sama, mada doko ka itame no desu ka? Kisui. Maruy kedo. Hai. Nan desho? Me sawari da kara. Dete itte kure. Oh. Soko ni. Kini ga te nemure na. Don, don, no, no, that's, no, mm, that's painful. That's, that's a bit, that's a bit painful. Okay. Don't. Whoa. Okay. <sighs> Boy, so I, I feel so bad. I feel so bad for her. <laughs> so he leaves the room. For some reason, I feel a lot better now that she's gone. And he's cleared it up as well. I should finally be able to sleep in, in peace. <clears throat> Any water. <sighs> okay. They're making a staircase. Oh. I hear the high pitched sound of a knock, and then the door opens. Why are you speaking like that, bro? My throat must be really dry. My voice sounds as hoarse as an old man's. Can't even recognize it as my own. Yeah. 兄さんが貧血で休んでいると聞いたので様子を見に来ただけです She looks me over as I lie flat against the bed Her gaze is filled with genuine concern It must be because of my headache But The concern of hers Feels completely unwarranted at this point 体は何ともない看病されるほどのものでもないからこうして一人で休んでいるんだお前も自分の部屋に戻れ翡翠の報告通りですね今の兄さんは体はもちろん精神まで落ち込んでいるようです
ですが食事はどうなさるおつもりですか時期夕食の時間ですがディナーああ、そ、so、it's already that late in the day still I'm not hungry nor do I have any desire to eat 食欲はないから夕食はいいいいから今日は下がってくれ気分が悪いんだわかりました今日はゆっくりお休みくださいですが起きていらっしゃるのなら部屋の電気ぐらいはつけてください暗がりにいると目を悪くするでしょ、うんうん、いいんだこの方が落ちうん、うん、アキハン leaves the room But even as she's closing the door behind her, there's a look in her eyes that suggests there's something more she'd like to say. <sighs> I can't stand this shit. First, there was Sui's attitude. Now, Akiya's. Looking at me with those worried eyes. Are they treating me like I'm some kind of tumor? This sort of thing happens to me all the time. It's not like I'm so severely wounded that I'm vomiting, or vomiting up, or sucking down blood. So why can't they just leave me in peace? Oh! We're not, we're not gonna wake up. Yeah. Something's gonna happen. <laughs> I can hear myself grinding my teeth in the darkness. I'm well aware that my nerves are rotting away. This suffocating feeling that's even worse than my headache makes me want to beep everyone. I feel like staying up will only make me depressed. The sun is already set too. I don't feel sleepy, but I'll try to get some sleep regardless. Hmm. Beep. You know, the end can be many things. It's true, it's true. Gotta somehow fill it in. I'm woken by the feeling that I'm being suffocated. I get out of bed, change my pajamas from, for some regular clothes, and grab my knife from the drawer. Eh? Eh? I'm pretty sure there's always a jug of water set out in the dining room. I'll go downstairs and get a drink. This, this is kind of spooky. <laughs> why, 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 why did you grab the knife, cheeky? I head for the dining room. <laughs> That's not the dining room, cheeky. <laughs> I head for the dining room. <laughs> That's not the. That's not the dining room. It's after midnight. There isn't a soul to be seen in the hallways of the mansion. There's nobody passing by. No defenseless backs to be found. Are we okay? Absolutely not. Uh, you missed out a lot at the start. Um, yeah, we're not okay at all. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think Roa has reincarnated part way into us as another split soul, but hasn't like taken over us completely. So we're, we're a bit in and out of it at the moment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I came at the wrong time. If I'd left an hour earlier, I would have had more options to choose from. There's a dragging sound as I walk. A dragging sound. It isn't the sound of me dragging my feet. It's the sound of the object I'm dragging behind me. I came at the perfect time. If I'd left an hour earlier, I wouldn't have been able to roam around so freely. Chuffa chuffa. I walk with the woman's hair grasped firmly in my fingers. She has long hair. I went for her because she reminded me of Akia. Oh my god! <laughs> oh. Not that her face looks all that similar. I was just taken with her hair.
Having passed through the lobby, I arrive at the dining room. I release my grip on her hair. She's still unconscious. I haven't killed her. Since I missed dinner, I decided to go out of my way to make this meal as delicious as possible. I've heard that the blood of a corpse is cold and rather unappetizing, and contains none of the value of their life. A dining room in the alley, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the woman's neck, free of any makeup, is like a piece of sweet, translucent confectionery. Not bad at all. As I grip my knife with one hand, I savor the woman's neck, and then... I was... an unspeakably vile dream. As I wake up, I gradually begin to recognize my surroundings. My throat is painfully dry, and all the hairs on my body are standing on end. What was that a dream? I don't... I don't know. <laughs> about something like that? I can't believe it. Why would I dream about going out of the city at night? Knocking a woman unconscious from behind and dragging her to the back alley. Sure, it might have just been a harmless dream, but... If I ever did something like that in real life, it'd mean I'd... gone certifiably insane. I try to get my strangely labored breathing under control. Rubbing my hand over my eyes, I take a few deep breaths. <laughs> exactly! Never go to sleep on an empty stomach. You might sleepwalk and do something you don't want to do. <laughs> My chest hurts so much that I doubt I'll be able to fall back asleep. I'll turn on the lights and read a book or something until morning comes. Eh? Oh? Hmm? Wait, what is this? What? What? Wait, oh, oh, this looks like the wall of an, of the alley. <laughs> it feels like cold water is being poured over my head. Oh no, little by little. Oh no, <laughs> my eyes adjust to the darkness. My breath catches in my throat. I'm not in my room. I'm in a deserted back alley. I'm holding an unsheathed knife in my hands. And lying on the ground before me is an unconscious woman I've never seen before. What am I doing? Wasn't it a dream? Wasn't all that just a dream? Uh oh. It must have been. I mean, when have I even so much as thought about doing something like this? Never wanted to attack a woman I've never met. On my night like uh, on my knife along the lines that crisscross her civil flesh and tear her limb from limb so that I can see her deep red blood, have I? Yeah, yeah, yes, you have, Shiki. <laughs> you literally did that to argue it, but anyway. It, <gasps> my mind is sent reeling by the disturbing vision. Red blood, warm blood, thirst-quenching blood. I don't even want to think about it, and yet, right now. I've got an insatiable desire to see that color. Kill her. Kill her. Kill her. Kill her. That urge repeats itself over and over in my mind, pulsating in time with my heartbeat. It's blood, my favorite. No, no, I, 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 I don't, I don't drink blood. <laughs> welcome, Alula. Welcome. 
Uh, yeah, Shiki's gone fucking insane. <laughs> what is this feeling? It's almost like I've turned into a beep. <laughs> yeah, this this is the dining hall. It's a nice place. <laughs> Something just like that, man. I'm like a being that has been released from the petty shackles that bound me and can no longer be fettered by anyone. I remember now. She said something along the same lines. All right. Bye-bye now. Your luck has finally run out. Beep. Thought you said he's not an evil reincarnation. I mean, I guess he is now. <laughs> I mean, seeing as in the previous room, uh, no, I was going to take it with Shiki. Uh, but he, he got fully murdered and killed. This one, he died and can pass on. But it's a bit haphazardly transferred. Because uh, Mar Mario came up and uh, mentioned it to him as well before, while he took over our body. Um, it's pretty much just in our mind. But yeah, it's a bit weird. Not not a full takeover, at least for now. <laughs> we have we did not. Ha uh, wait, wait. Do we, do we, we did not have dinner. She's not himself when he's. That's true. It's like it's like a Snickers. He's, he's not himself when he's not hungry. Mario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mario Bestino. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Remember blonde boy, little boy puppets. That boy popped out of nowhere with a with a smug look on his face. <clears throat> Isn't it about time you faced up to the facts? You may not have realized it yourself, but the truth is you're nothing more than a long dead psycho psychotic murderer. You thought Mario. No, 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 not Chris Pratt Mario. No, 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 no. I don't think. I don't think Chris Pratt Mario's in this. <laughs> but then what? What is all of this? Why would I be doing something like this? I've come to my senses, so why am I still pressing my knife against this woman's neck? Not only that, but... Just what was that blood-soaked spectacle that I got a taste of last night? In that instant, it finally clicks. The sense of dread I felt this morning. The parts of my memory that are nothing but gaping voids. This weekend, Saturday and Sunday, I have absolutely no recollection of what I did on those days. <laughs> I frantically wreck my brain. I can vaguely remember Saturday. Sunday, however, is a complete blank. There's nothing. It's like it never happened. How long have I been? They say all the people who become Roy's hosts maintain their sense of self until suddenly they just whew, become different. Living my life as someone who's not Tonoshiki. <sighs> oh, shit. <laughs> the woman's eyelids stir. She's starting to regain consciousness. Shit, 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 shit. Once she wakes up, there will be no turning back. Can't explain this away. I have no choice but to destroy the evidence. If I don't thoroughly dismember her before she gets up, I'll... Ho! Oh, that's your one thing, not to run away. Okay. Uh. I move my knife. Oh. I don't even need to look at her lines of death. If I do that, there's no point in hesitating. After all, if I don't stop... You've already sliced through plenty of pale necks, haven't you? 
You don't mean I truly am nothing more than scum. My fingers have gone numb. I can no longer pull back or withdraw. I hear the woman's voice. She realizes that a knife is being held to her neck. Oh, fuck! <laughs> the woman's screams are drowned out by my own. I scream. I scream and I scream like a broken siren. And then suddenly... I'm already sprinting away. My fingers are trembling. My mind is completely blank. But the fact remains that I narrowly managed to run away before I thrust my knife into that woman. However, if she had screamed before I did, then just like that, I would have. I'm scared. Scared of what I might have done scared than I've ever been before. Oh. It's coming after me. I can feel it hanging over me. Yet, no matter how far I run, I'll never be able to escape the horror I've become. I dive into my room and try to lock the door. It's the simplest grabbing that protruding piece of metal and twisting at him yet. All I can hear is the sound of the knob turning, turning, and turning. I'm scared. If I don't lock the door soon, he'll get inside. That indistinct something will get inside. enter this room. I can't let that thing leave this room. What thing? I don't know. Despite not knowing, I keep trying to lock the door like a man possessed. The only thing that's turning is the doorknob. My fingers are still gripping the doorknob, refusing to let go. I turn it over and over again like a madman. It turns and turns and turns and turns. The rattling as it spins beats against my eardrums and cascades into a... into my brain. Rattle, rattle, rattle. <sniffs> Losing my temper, I use my other hand to plunge the, my knife into the wrist of the hand that's still gripping the doorknob. The sounds have finally stopped. Only now can I get a good grip on the lock. Because it's too slippery. <laughs> Did they know we'd been leaving? I see we might have. She tried to let us know uh, something, but didn't. couldn't bring it up to us. After breaking my third finger, I lose all hope. There's no hope for me anymore. But my other hand just won't let go of the knife. At this rate, I'll never be able to lock the door. and I thrust my knife into my palm and car carve out an appropriately sized hole. <laughs> Perfect. Delighted, I'd wrap my palm around the handle of the key. The piece of metal slots neatly into, my, into the gap in my flesh. The pain is so excruciating that I burst out laughing. I laugh so hard I feel like my mouth's about to split open. I'm laughing through the pain. I twist my wrist. A brilliant display. I finally managed to lock the door. Oh, I don't think your hand is the door, Shiki. <laughs> I can't stop laughing. I feel a little thirsty. So I hurl myself at the door to try and get to the dining room. It won't open, it won't open, it won't open! There's no way around it. I bring my bloody palm to my mouth and lap up the fluid. It doesn't taste good at all. 
My throat is still that of a human, so it's not tough enough to gulp down this viscous fluid. <clears throat> Suddenly, I lock eyes with a stranger. The man reflected in the window looks incomparably happy, yet incomparably pitiful. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think he's Ethan Winters. He's not gonna just put some liquid on him. <laughs> With that, I finally understand. Understand that I'm already done for. <laughs> Okay, look, uh, I, oh, that's up, that'd be a fucking terrible, I need to see how long this actual day is, I really, really want to continue, but if it's like, I think the next thing's like six hours, I can't do that. <laughs> oh. Second. Yep, yep. The next thing, six hours. <laughs> We're gonna have to keep this for its own stream. Holy shit! You know what? You know what? I, I, um, I'm gonna. I, okay. I, we'll, a little bit. We'll, we'll do a little bit. A little bit. We'll do a little bit. Time flows past like molten iron, dull, hot, and heavy. I can't bring myself to look at my bloodied right hand. Who was man? It was he himself. <laughs> my broken fingers have healed, and the bleeding has stopped, and my wounds have closed. It's so inhuman that I can't even think of it as my own. <laughs> the room echoes with the panting of a wild animal. Morning arrives. But I haven't had so much as a wink of sleep. My head hurts. It seems that I drew my glasses somewhere. I can't find them. I can't find them even though they're so precious to me. I can't find them because they're so precious to me. Staring at the lines sprawled across the surface of the room is making me nauseous. Okay. Oh! The nausea is much too intense for me to handle, so I begin slashing at everything in sight. It makes me feel a bit better. Only during the brief moment where I'm slicing through something do I feel any reprieve from this suffering. And yet, the more I destroy my surroundings, the greater the thirst within me grows. Oh. <sighs> what is it I thirst for? I know all too well. In a sense, I thirst for everything. Every single thing I see only serves to get on my nerves. It's repulsive. I don't understand what kind of purpose there is in continuing to live. And continuing to reproduce when the end has already been decided and the conclusion can be so plainly seen it's so beyond inadequate that it's beyond unappealing everything reflected in my eyes comes off as eerie yet at the same time if i close them i can do nothing but remember how it felt when i killed her the tactile sensation of a cruel heart plate becoming one with tender pulsating flesh to a being so of higher intelligence 
The feeling inflicts an almost crippling blow upon the soul. The sensation so repulsive makes you want to bite off your own tongue. A dead end, so laden with despair at the thought that there exists nothing greater for someone who has had a taste of it. There is no going back. To make matters even worse, the one I murdered was so perfect. It was appalling. The excitement I felt when I dismembered Articuid's body into seventeen pieces has been permanently etched into my brain. The pleasure of dismantling that beautiful body, of picking apart a life possessed of power, incommensurate with her human form, entered me. I can say with certainty that she wasn't the one who died back then. It was my own brain. We murder, but she's not dead. That's true, but that had also fucked him up a lot. <laughs> she treats it like taking a part of Lego. No, <laughs> that's funny. She's just a piece of Lego. Go on. <sighs> I want to break those who are in good health. I want to kill those who are in perfect health. Even though I know that it's taboo, I just can't help myself. Oh. Oh. Okay, Shiki, calm down. My body's so riled up that it feels like I'm about to lose my mind. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh. The sudden sound of someone else's voice strikes fear into my heart. I can hear a woman speaking to me from the other side of the door. <sighs> oh, this root is fucked. <laughs> I don't know how to feel. <laughs> Oh no. Lock the door. Lock the door and let me inside. No way now. If I let her in here, there's no telling what I'd do. I'm already at my wit's end. I'm barely able to hold myself back as it is. And that's with the benefit of being alone. And now you're telling me. That I should let something so beep looking inside. Because all the rooms are fucked in their own little special way. I mean, yeah, but I don't think the Articuid's route was this fucked. <laughs> oh no! I yell in the direction of the door. I feel so bad for her, holy shit. <laughs> if she enters this room, if she comes inside, I'm sure I'll end up doing something that can't be undone. After a brief silence, I hear beep footsteps. She quietly retreats from the door to my room. safe now. There's nobody around. There's nobody for me to beep. I mean, we can we kind of know what these are. This is obviously kill. <laughs> that thought helps to calm me down. You need a distraction. Something. A book. Maybe to take my mind off all this. The book is missing from the conserv conservatory. It was a bi biography written in all kinds of different languages. An account of someone's voyage through life. It's not like I'd been able to read it properly, but it still would have served as a good distraction. I can't find it no matter how hard I look. I can't find it. 
desperately trying to remember what the cover looked like. But no matter how hard I try, I just can't picture it. The book. Oh. So this book was a book about Roa's life and his reincarnations. So was the book never real in the first place? Was Roa always in our mind? <sighs> Come to think of it. Why was a book like that even in my room in the first place? It didn't have a title. It wasn't some bestseller. I don't even know where it was printed. It was the story of a life that was impossibly, unbelievably, inconceivably long. I'll search the bookshelf. If it isn't on the table, there's a chance I it got put away. I can't find it. In which case, there should be a gap somewhere. If a book is missing, there would obviously be a space where it used to be. But there isn't one. A seamless wall of book spines towers before me. I don't know anymore. I can't even remember holding that book in my hands. I don't know where I might have picked it up. I don't even know if that book even existed at all. That's why, if you ever find... That you're the same as they are. The sight. I recall her grating voice. That book. Its contents. It was the book I always read when I couldn't sleep. But... Is there a chance it was just a dream? That I was already sleeping. Dreaming about not being, just being able to sleep. Then, beep, beep, yourself, beg for forgiveness, cry for mercy, with tears streaming down your face, and then beep your throat. A dream. A dream. But, I don't dream. On top of that, Tonoshiki doesn't even possess that kind of knowledge. I don't have the, the building blocks needed to form such dreams. Those dreams... weren't... mine. You may not have realized it yet yourself. In that case... What were they? When did I become like this? When the hell did I start seeing dreams that belonged to someone else? But the truth is, you're nothing more than a long dead psychotic murderer. No. 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 My memories are just a little hazy right now. That's all. Articuit was an exception, nothing more. Back then. I simply failed to suppress my own desires. That's all there was to it. I'm not crazy. I'm not psychotic. There's no way in hell I'm going to let myself be driven mad over something like this. Not after CL Senpai came back into my life. Apparently that's just how it goes, you know. They say all the people who become Roa's host maintains their sense of self, until suddenly, they just... I'm panning heavily. The sunlight is getting on my nerves. My throat. It's so dry that I feel like I'm about to go insane. I hear a woman's voice coming from the other side of the door. I don't have the presence of mind to answer her. Words I can't even remember how to speak. There's only one thing on my mind. <laughs> there's, only, there's only one thing on my mind. Go away, Taco Bell. <laughs> That's to come at the worst time. Curse you, Taco Bell! 
there's something one thing on my mind. Someone yielding to their urges. Their throat burning with the desire to beep and peep. That someone is me. Whoa, I bang my head against the wall. I smash it into the wall over and over again until my forehead's about to crack. But try as I might, I can't dislodge the image of shredding beep into pieces from my mind. So that's how it is. It's an urge that drives you mad while keeping your will intact. It leaves your personality and memory untouched while slowly overriding your purpose your desires. It is the horror of being transformed into something else while fully conscious of yourself. Is this it? Is this Roa? I hear the sound of someone banging on the door. I can't let her open it. If she does, it'll be the end of me. That dream was the memory of Roa before me. The final memories of someone I don't know. Someone who walled themselves up in their room. Someone who eventually ended up killing their parents and transforming their hometown into one infested with vampires. There's nothing I can do. This isn't something I can solve by killing myself. This isn't something that's within my power to change at all. That dream made it clear to me. Now that I've experienced the feelings of the previous incarnation, I understand. If I killed myself, my will would be the only thing that died. Rois would remain, now in full control of the body I had ceded to him. If that happened, I would turn into something even more horrifying. Shiki-sama, open it! Shiki-sama! I can hear a woman's voice over the sound of someone banging on the door. It's a familiar voice, but it sounds like she's speaking in some foreign language. They're so far away. It's only a wall. One flimsy wall is all that stands between us. But right now, they sound as though they're calling to me across the expanse that separates the Earth from the Moon. It's ten o'clock in the morning. The woman gave up and left. Each woman in the house came in turn and knocked on my door. I ignored them all. Oh no, we're losing our... <laughs> oh no! Oh, English! <laughs> no. I'm hungry. But I'm still okay for now. Leaning my back against the wall. I hold my trembling body tight. Two o'clock. So thirsty that I feel like I'm about to die. Time feels like it's flowing in fits and starts. Sometimes, ten minutes feels like a second. While at others, a second feels like ten minutes. A continuous strip feed of stimulation, even as my consciousness shrivels and fades. My body feels like it's overflowing with excess energy and desire. Four o'clock. There's another knock at the door. They're calling someone's name. No matter how hard I try, I just can't tell whose voice that is, or whose name they're calling. Five o'clock. The light is beginning to fade. 
6 o'clock. 7 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Someone's here. Shiki-san, you go home and take him a star. Asakara Nani Motabete, I know they were. Might this my masio? It's Beep's voice. She's knocking on the door. Bonatara, who shook it a kid and Motabete Murai Mascara, eh? I hear a rattling noise. It isn't the sound of someone knocking on the door. And that of a key being turned. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, the door unlocks. I'll. Turn Kohaku away. The door opens. It's too late. Even if I turned her away now, it wouldn't change the fact that she's able to come inside. Still, entertaining the idea of eating food is a mistake in itself. It's just too direct. Thoughts so enticing that I'd end up wavering. My parched throat and tattered thoughts are crying out for relief. Neither choice? I, uh, I don't know. Maybe. It's as if they intend to shatter what little remains of Tonoshiki. Oh, no. <clears throat> I do like Shiki's psychotic moments. They're fun to voice out. <laughs> Even if they are fucking traumatizing. <clears throat> I start breathing heavily. I have to. I have to hold this back somehow. <laughs> oh my, what on earth happened here? <laughs> With an unfaltering smile, Beep. I expresses surprise as she surveys the wreckage of my room. Her elegant features show no trace of fear. Her defenseless figure doesn't recognize me as a threat. Her skin is as pale as fine porcelain, youthful and pristine, as though intently designed to melt the hearts of men. There's no hesitation or tension in her voice. Speaks to me just as she always does. Her words, differently and deliberately chosen, despite the wreckage that stands before her. I can't control myself. If I don't control myself, I can't hold back. If I don't hold back, I trust benevolence. If I'm still able to think of those qualities as virtues, then I should confine myself in my own shell, even if that means I have to kill myself. And yet, with an unfaltering smile, Beep. draws closer to where I'm curled up on the bed. The me who isn't me, Snickers. It's clear now. This girl is accustomed to nursing the sick. She approaches me gently, a tender smile on her face, cautious of me without acting as though I'm something to be feared. It's clear that isn't the first time she's dealt with a monster cloaked in human skin. Shut up. Hurry up. 
time. <laughs> Pushing what remains of my sanity to the absolute limit, I somehow managed to eke out those words of warning. Or at least, I try to. And my words had the opposite effect. Relieved, Beep. brings her visage off her over to where my body lies, cowering on the bed. Her white fingers brush, brush against my shoulder. Fingers made of flesh and blood. I feel their faint warmth. An explosion of sparks bursts, crackling from the base of my skull. I am powerless to stop myself. My body is no longer my own. As a beep beep, I crave the blood of humans so badly I can't stand it. I put all my strength into my legs as they try to rush over to her. I put all my strength into trying to stop them. And yet, it only serves to do the opposite. I put all my strength into my arms as they try to pin her down. I put all my strength into trying to stop them. And yet, it only serves to fuel their advance. I put all my strength into protecting her. And yet, nothing is working as it should. There's no other way. I bite my own tongue off. If I stop myself from breathing, my body should stop moving. Stop. 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 With that, I managed to tie up my right hand. My outstretched right hand, which had been poised to tear her to shreds, jams itself into my mouth, prevent me from choking on my tongue. But my left hand, my damn left hand is still free. My left hand won't obey me even as I tearfully fight to hold it back. My left hand won't let me move so much as a finger. Even as I strain so hard that blood starts to trickle from my nose. My left hand darts out as I watch on helplessly. My left hand coils itself around the woman's pale neck, like a serpent suffocating its prey. jolt me awake. The glasses I thought I'd lost are by my feet. I found something that wasn't there until a moment ago. I don't know how they could have gotten here. I don't want to think about it right now. At long last, my vision falls back in line with reality. And with that, Before Milai's quark sounds beep, she's completely motionless. Did she lose consciousness? Or her life? I can't even tell anymore. All I know for certain is that the sight before me is an irreversible reality. My hands hang limp, the left dripping blood, the right smeared with it from trying to stop the left. And the tongue I know, I bit off his back, and with it, the pain. Right now, that's all that exists. I've gone mad. 
I've gone completely and irreversibly mad. Determined as I was, I couldn't even stop one of my own arms. My thoughts are shriveling away. My nausea isn't subsiding at all. My sense of guilt is being blotted out by the, th by the thirst. I need her porcelain throat. I need her succulent flesh. I plunge my teeth into her throat. It's gone. I don't know how much longer I can stay sane. I, I don't think you're sane anymore, bro. Out. I need to get out. If I stay here, I'll end up killing Hokusan. If I stay in the mansion, I'll end up turning on Akiha and Hisui too. So before these urges return, I have to disappear. Okay, chill. A cage far away from someone else. If I don't lock myself away, somewhere far from anyone else, sooner or later I'll lose myself again. I flee the mansion like a wild beast. Has my skin somehow become more sensitive? Or is it my hearing that's grown sharper? And the ringing in my ear stabs at my brain. Even though there's nobody in sight, I can sense the presence of countless people flooding out from the sea of buildings below me. <laughs> if I stay around these people that are swarming around like mosquitoes, I'll end up losing control again. Somewhere with nobody around. Somewhere where I can't make any mistakes. I have to escape to a place where I won't be able to hurt anyone while I'm, while I'm still alive. I'll still myself, sorry. <clears throat> I arrive at the Moonlit Park, a recreational area built in the heart of the business district. People use it during the day, but once night falls it empties out and becomes a blind spot in the city. But even though the park itself is as silent as the gra their grave, it's still swamped with the overwhelming presence of people. Each person's breathing, each grating voice, is another stone around my neck. I can't believe it. Even though I'm over 200 meters from the station, I can hear the hustle and bustle of downtown as though I'm standing right in the center of it all. Even though the lights in the windows in the residential district are so far away that they're little more than pinpricks, they're still bright enough to make my head spin. I clench one hand over my forehead to try and suppress my headache. Did I ever think there'd be a place completely free from the presence of human life in a city this crowded? Put in your- It's true, that's true! If he puts in his airpods, with uh, noise cancelling, he won't be able to hear anything. Mmm. Smart. <laughs> it's impossible to be truly alone in a city that has reached this stage of civilization. Precisely. Just look around you. All the prey you could ever want is mere footsteps away. Look at them all. Picking off a one or two of them won't change anything. Honestly. They're all subconsciously wishing for someone to come along and trim the fat away. It's simply tidying up. No different to taking out the garbage. My head hurts. Can you quit making that goddamn racket inside my head already? I'm on the verge of passing out because of this headache as it is. So if you don't shut up, I might just give up and close my eyes on purpose. No, that's a bad idea. It's been a full day since I last slept. I close my eyes and be asleep in a heartbeat. My body and mind are both desperate for rest. But I know that if I succumb to sleep now, I won't be waking up again. 
and even on the off chance I did wake up, it would be as someone else. That prospect is terrifying. Unbearably so. So before it can happen, I'll take my knife and jam it into my own throat. How oh, pathetic. I barely even sunk the tip in. I can't do it. That terrifying prospect alone is not impeaches enough for me me to take my own life. I feel like somewhere, long ago, I swore a vow that I'd live this life to the fullest. <laughs> if I can't die, then I at least need to be kept under control. Someone has to keep an eye on me to make sure I don't fall asleep or lose my mind. So <laughs> I didn't want her to see me like this. Now's not the time to be worried about appearances. Also right. Yeah, she told me that I should turn to her if anything were to happen. Desperately holding on to this last glimmer of hope, I take out my phone. Nobody can cure my condition. Not even CL Senpai. As amazing as she may be, I know that reaching out will only cause more problems for her. But I want to see her. I want to hear her voice. If she comes here, I can still keep on being Tonoshiki. I call Senpai using the number saved to my phone. <laughs> After the third ring, I hear her voice emanating from the speaker. もしもし、シエルです。トーナ君から電話なんて珍しいですね。お、いえ、珍しいというよりこれが初めてでした。How oh, strange. Right now her voice feels so incredibly warm. もしもし、ケスキリア。ケスキリア。もしかしてただの操作ミスでしょうか。おい、聞こえてますか？ her voice is playful. I've only been there once, but I can easily picture Seal Senpai lazing around in her apartment on the other side of the phone. I can't speak. I can't come up with anything good to say. I really am an idiot. I shouldn't have called her. Just hang up without saying anything. Senpai. Try as I might. Her voice is just far too warm. I'm unable to stop the words spilling from my mouth. I wanted to end this. I tried as hard as I could to come up with some lame excuse. Tell her I'd see her at school tomorrow and hang up. I couldn't do it. Senpai. The warmth has disappeared from Ciel Senpai's voice. どうなくそれどういう意味ですかダメって何がダメなんですだからダメなんだ自分なりに何とかしてみようと努力はしたけど無駄だったこれは and an exceptionally vile one at that. Even now, if I were to let my mind wander, I'd end up thinking about how much I want to go back to the mansion and slit the throats of Beep and the others with my knife. And as far as I'm concerned, the fact that I want to see the blood of not just some stranger but some of the people that are nearest and dearest to me means I'm already rotten to thy core. How do I do 
南口の公園です人気がないところに来たつもりだけどここもダメでしたわかりました人気を避けるのは私も賛成ですブローブと戦ったデパート跡に向かってくださいあそこなら誰も近寄らないし何より静かでしょうこちらもすぐに向かいます、うん、そうかあの場所なら誰もいない遠野くんならバリケードの隙間を切って中に入れるでしょう先に忍び込んで地下で待っていてください With a click the call ends. I put away my phone and somehow managed to struggle to my feet. Senpai. I'll get the CCL, Senpai. I don't know what will happen once we meet, but I want to see her all the same. <sighs> my whole body starts heating up all over again. I start hobbling away from the park, praying that, do that I don't run into anyone on my way to the remains of the department store. I've made it to the front of the barricade, away from the public eye. I take off my glasses and cut the chains that are holding the barricade together. I can't believe it. I must have put my knife in my pocket without even realizing it. I probably... No. I definitely put it there. So that I'd be ready to kill someone at a moment's notice. Forcing myself to come to terms with that fact, I slip through the gate in the barricade. I don't want to think about anything right now. I'm sure things will turn out fine if I just do exactly as Senpai told me. I pick my way down the shattered remains of, my, of the concrete structure. The drop between each layer of rubble makes it look like a staircase made for giants. Climbing down is child's play. Getting back up again is going to be next to impossible. Clambering up a sheer cliff almost two meters tall is difficult enough as it is. If you have to do it over and over again, increase the risk of pulling a foot, of putting a foot wrong and bringing the whole thing crashing down on you. And compared to other animals, humans really do leave a lot to be desired when it comes to their physical abilities. The grating noise grows fainter and fainter with each giant step I descend. Even though this place is about as far from the station as the park was, it seems that the noise from downtown can't penetrate its depths. Oh. My tracker died. Let's put this on challenge. My trousers are caked with dirt by the time I reach the bottom. When I look around, all I can see is the night sky. And the remains of the shattered building. I hadn't noticed it before, but this place isn't a completely barren wasteland. The columns that supported the underground chapel are still standing, as are the number of large piles of rubble. Somehow managing to push my over overworked legs forward, I arrive at the upper center of the collapse. I can't take another step. As soon as I arrive at the clearing, I collapse to my knees. The rest of my body also threatens to topple forward. But I catch myself with my hands, ending up on all fours. It's like I'm prostrating myself. In a sense, that's an appropriate pose for me right now. My body feels hot. However, I don't feel like I'm going to lose myself anymore. I'm sure that because I attacked Kohoku-san, my urges have temporarily subsided. Gastric juice is well up in my throat. A bitter taste pervades my, 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 my mouth. I haven't eaten anything today. So the only thing I could vomit out was my acidic gastric juices. What I've done is unforgivable, no matter how much I apologize. No, even just the act of apologizing itself is unforgivable. I don't think she's dead. I don't think I killed her. 
But how is that supposed to make me feel any better? The fact that I at least did the bare minimum that could be expected of a human. How many days ago was it now? When I was wallowing in despair after killing Articuit. It was the senpai that saved me. She taught me that this world is divided into those who have sinned and those who have not. But those who can atone and those who cannot. But what should I do? How can I atone for the sins I have unjustifiably visited on others? For the wounds I have, not for the wounds I have unfairly inflicted on their hearts. <clears throat> All of a sudden, darkness descends on me. A long shadow cast by the moonlight falls across my body. I hear the rasping sound of hard souls scraping against stone. Someone's heading in my direction. She really came. Warmth returns to my worn out body. Wanting nothing more than to see my senpai's face, I tilt my head back to gaze up at the night sky. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we we ended here. Before before it gets too much that we're not able to stop. Uh, I do have something to do. If I didn't, I probably would continue. But uh, it is it is my dog's birthday today. Uh, I, I I have to cut him his dog cake and wish him a happy birthday. So for now, we will wrap this up. So yeah! Uh, so much shit happened. And this is, yeah. Wow. <laughs> This is going to be something. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this wild ride. Um, we'll see what happens next time. In regards to the next stream, I don't think there'll be another one this week. There might be on Sunday, maybe, if, if I if I want to continue. I, usually not, but we'll see, we'll see. Um, but yeah, thank you all for coming. Hope you all enjoyed, and um, yeah, I'll see you guys next stream. I, I really need to drink. My throat is so... Fucking horse. Uh, after doing uh, the shiki voice for so long. Mm. Thanks for stream. Thank you for coming to stream. <clears throat> yeah, my throat's a bit dry. I I, I didn't really want to hydrate too much because it's in character too. He has a horse throat. I was like, okay, okay, I can I can work with this. <laughs> But yeah, thank you for coming, and I'll see you guys next stream. Goodbye! Wah. Baba booey, shiki, sussy, chungus.